today we're continuing with Kilroy's Key 3, New to Me, 2022, and now we're to Solo War Games. Now this one might be one of your more anticipated videos. Uh, a lot of you I know play solo. I play a lot of solo, play solo specific, and also uh, two-handed uh, games that are opposed. I play them two-handed, so I play almost everything solo at some time or another. And this video, you know, is going to focus on solo war games. I'm trying to keep it a little bit short because, you know, the king of solo, Wayne Hansen, uh, award-winning, Charles S. Roberts award-winning Wayne Hansen, check that out, um, says my videos are too long, so I got to listen to him. Anyway, uh, what am I not going to cover today? Well, uh, in these solo games, I'm not going to cover games that I play two-handed. I'm not going to cover games that have a solo mechanism. I'm trying to focus on games that are solo specific, you know, solo, you know, centric. And so in that regard, uh, I'm not going to be covering, there's a, there's a lot of games that I would probably like to talk about uh, that, that I enjoy playing solo, you know, for example, like, you know, Plains Indians War by GMT. However, you know, that game is an opposed game that has a solo mechanism in it, and, and, and a, a fine solo mechanism at that. Also, what I'm not going to cover, I'm not going to cover games that I've already covered. You know, so if I've covered them in another segment, I'm not going to go into it. So, for example, all the war game books, uh, you know, uh, Great Salvo would probably fall into this. I probably played this more than any other game solo uh, this year uh, in 2022, and... Um, but I'm not going to cover it if I've already covered it on another list, like, you know, the, the, the War Game books, uh, you know, Nubia, uh, I covered that already in another list. That would possibly make it into my top three. American Tank Ace definitely would make it into my top three, but I've already covered that on a couple, uh, or at least on the SUT World War II. Same with Landsworth Ridge, uh, would make it into my top three. Uh, and Spruance Leader, oh god, that book is heavy. I would probably cover that one as well. It probably wouldn't make it into my top three, possibly because of the setup time. Uh, one thing that I like about solo games that kind of fits into my point of view, again, that's presentation, operation, and value, into the value proposition uh, I like to have a solo game not take forever to set up. I like the the more compact and easy to get to the table uh, and play and put away is is better for me in a solo game. Uh, not that I don't like the big crunchy type uh, solo games, you know, like the uh, the, the 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 white games uh, with um, you know uh, Enemy at the Coast. Uh, and uh, Atlantic Chase, uh, which won for a solo game, even though it's opposed and solo, but that's a whole nother topic for another day. Um, Spruance Slater just is, is too involved for me to unpack that box. It's, a, it's almost a victim of its own success. It's got way too much content. <laughs> you hear that, people? It's got way too much content. It's got a lot of content, which is great, but uh, you, you need to set aside some time to, to sort through that, figure out what you want to play, how you want to play it, and lay it out. The DBG games tend to do that. Uh, the, they are top of the list, in my opinion, of, of solo publishers. That They might be the, the best solo publisher because the, the vast majority of their games do focus on solo, but they're very involved in that there's... They're, there's a, there's a, a, if you get all the content or get a lot of the content for any of their games, whether it be Warfighter, Leader Series, uh, or or what have you, there's a lot to kind of sort through, figure out what you want to play, how, how you want to set it up, play it, uh, and I, I, when I do that, I tend to leave those games out for a little bit uh, because uh, the effort to put set those up, I want to play a lot. I want to play a whole campaign, or I want to play a. a uh, several games in a row of that, and so, uh, so I've already covered Spruance Leader, but if I if if I hadn't, uh, it might not make it in the top three just because of of the the, the setup time. Um, other notable, you know, mentions that you know, kind of honorable mentions or ones that 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 possibly came close, but I kind of went away from. You know, the whole uh, high-flying dice games, I find, I got into a couple of those this year. These are solo-specific, very simple setup games that, that you can get right into, uh, but I did not get them to the table uh, uh, at either either at all or enough to fig 
for them to fit into this equation this year. Uh, another potential honorable mention is the landing at Gallipoli. Fits well into that setup time. There, this, there's really no setup at all. Uh, but um, again, did not play this enough. Plus, um, I don't know if it'd make it in my top three. There, there's good things about it, but I don't know if it'd make it into my top three. And then you got a uh This one is perfect setup time. Uh, Real easy to get into, uh, figure out the rules pretty quickly. This is dealing with the resistance during uh, the French resistance during World War II, and I don't know, it just it, it didn't feel uh, war gamey enough, whatever that means. At least not to me. I mean, it's still a good game, great solid game. If you want to play a, it's a little bit puzzly as solo games tend to be, but you get uh, I want to play a game about the French uh, resistance. Uh, this one's uh, not not bad. Uh, so what does that leave us with? Well, that leaves us with uh, my top three. So let's talk about Battle Card. Uh, Battle Card's not my top three. <laughs> I just did a video on this uh, yesterday or whenever you're watching this a few days ago. And uh, this is a print and play. It's it's a fine game by um, Niles Johansson and uh, David Thompson. Uh, go check this out. And you can it's free to print and play. I mean, get it off BGG. But uh, this is a great setup, solo setup game. But this is not in my top three. I just put that out there as a placeholder. To get to our top three, which, as you can see from some of the maps here, let's do a page out so you can see what some of the uh, usual suspects are in this case. And that is uh, Hilladov's Siege of Malta and Kito Batai. So, uh, so why did I pick these? Well, after I did all those exceptions, <laughs> it didn't leave much for solo war games. No, th th these are fine solo war games in their own right. Uh, let's start off with uh, Kito Batai. Uh, this one is, um, I, I got this uh, over a year ago, but I really didn't get it to the table and really get into it till till this year, till 2022. Um, this is somewhat of a, a um, little bit of a puzzly game as well, but it's dealing with uh, the attack on Midway, and uh, it, it's 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 not a bad little game. It's, it's a really interesting little uh, war game, and it really fits well into that whole value proposition of, Easy to set up, get into play, and and move on. Um, with respect to Hill of Doves and Siege, both of these games take a little bit more time to set up. But one of the reasons why these make it into uh, my top three is the topics. The, the, these are not the most covered topics at all. The first Anglo Boer War. I don't know how many if there how many games are out there. If there are, I think Legion's done them all. But uh, there's not a lot of games on this topic, so this was interesting in that regard. Plus, this has some interesting mechanics that uh, I I enjoyed, and so reason it made it into the list. And then 1565 Siege of Malta is a, is part is kind of the static battle. Uh, I've talked about that in the past, but it's it's a static battle system. Um, I like it. Uh, you can play either side of of uh, the forces on this. Uh, there's cards that you go into it. Uh, some people think that uh, you can't win as one of the sides. Um, I don't know. I haven't played it enough of bo both sides to get like a percentage on that. But uh, but I've enjoyed it and found it interesting and, and the setup not not that tough to get into. So let's go to my point of view, presentation, operation, and value. So let's talk a little bit about presentation here. Uh, and I always like to start with the maps if they have them. Uh, in this regard. So this is Hill of Doves, and this is one of the reasons why this made it to the list is the interesting aspect of Hill of Doves is that it is, uh, you get three maps in this one. Uh, in fact, three mountain maps uh, come with this game, plus you get a, uh, you get a battle board as well, if you want to use the battle board, and it's mounted as well. So, uh, so production wise, this is very nice uh, when you look at this game as far as production. And the way this game works is there's a kind of, you kind of have your strategic board as you're trying to get forces uh, to land and get them get the supplies to the right spot. And this is like looking at the whole strategic situation on this board. Then you've got the, a little bit more of a logistics uh, situation where you're trying to get your supplies and and uh, uh, let's see if you see your little wagon train here. You're trying to or your convoy. You're trying to get those supplies up to the the pl place, uh, the su troops and supplies up to the place where they can actually uh, participate in combat. And then you've got this is really the tactical board, and this is where the combat takes place. You've got to t control so many of these place uh, spaces. 
uh, to win the game. Uh, and so, and the, and the AI, AI is built in into this game, so it is, um, uh, you know, it, it, it's a solo only uh, type game. You know, there's cards in here that that kind of deal with your AI. The cards are decent. Uh, the, the, there's art on the cards. There's a lot of information on the cards, but to play the game, it's not really historical cards. This is all gameplay type stuff, and it and it has kind of Stuka Joe's. Uh, uh, sequence of play kind of cards. It uses that system that uh, Suka Joe has used a lot and actually came out with a card-driven game solo. Uh, they use that system that that's how you play the game. You just kind of flip these this deck over and it tells you what's phase and what segment, what's going on. And that's how the AI is kind of run. Uh, so decent cards. You know, the counters and everything are, are fine. It's standard kind of uh, Legion uh, war games type counters. They're fine. Uh, the, to me, the big the big impression I had, or the thing I was most impressed with, is the boards and and how they lay out here. So you get the three uh, operational boards there, and I've got this compliments of Legion, so I want to thank them for uh, for sending that to me. Appreciate that. Next, I want to take a look at Keto Batai. Uh, this is a little, small little bag game here. As you can see, it's solitaire, and this is the map for it. And you're basically keeping track of your carriers and the the time, and you're you're drawing chits out of a cup to see what you're facing. But you're trying to attack midway. You you are the uh, the Japanese in this case, and these are your carriers. But then there's going to be depending on what you draw out of the cup. Um, you're going to get attacked by uh, by the U.S. in this case, and you know the counters are really small. There's the Japanese counters, but they're fine. Uh, you know they're, they're decent thickness. They're a little bit better than what you would find in the old-fashioned you know uh, decision games or the you know the magazine games. They're, they're better quality than that. But you know that that's the board here. Th this really is more of a again a little bit more of a puzzle type system of how you uh, how you are attacking the um, the U.S. at Midway. Then comes uh, 1565, which is um, dealing with the siege of Malta, and this is uh, a, a, as I said a static battle. The forces are going to be laid out here. They're going to be laid out in blocks uh, or cubes or whatever you want to call them. Uh, so really good wooden bits, uh, great production value, as you can see here. And it comes in a nice little tray here. But uh, these are the cards that you'll that you'll be using to play out on your player board and to make decisions uh, of where you're moving troops. And again, these are the, the troops that you'll be using. And plus there's some Navy in there as well. But uh, th this is... Um, you know, as you can see, very excellent production. This is a mounted board. You get these. This is the Knight's Order book, and this is how you make your orders. You're going to be choosing orders and then uh, doing what it says on there, depending upon uh, the situation or, or the reaction and what happens here. So it's it's kind of an order system with these with using cards and using these blocks on the board. So. Um, so in that regard, uh, let's go. Let's go. Let's go to the tape. Let's go back to the board here and see what we think of each of these games from a key standpoint. Because it's time to give out keys here. So uh, looking at the presentation value of each of these games, um, I'm going to go with the three keys being uh, the Siege of Malta because uh, I really do like the, the blocks and. The map board and the player aid and uh, the, the the order sheet and the cards I think play out really nice and really add to the entire game. That leads to uh, the two keys going to Hill of Doves. I just think that the mounted maps, the counters, and the cards are you know the next best in, uh, among these three, uh, which unfortunately kind of leaves Keto Putai as. Um, as the one. I mean, there's not a lot of production in this game. This is a relatively simple game, uh, but uh, highly playable, and I really do like playing it. So that's where I'm going to come out on uh, production so, or presentation for my P and point of view. Next to it, operation. Operation is the rules. It is the um, gameplay it is ease of play. It's the understanding of it. It's the if there are any charts or player aids that help you 
uh, augment that gameplay or understand that gameplay that, that that goes into here so in that regard i mean this this one is is a little bit uh this one's a tough one in some regards but uh i think i'm, I'm gonna definitely know what the one key is the one key is going to be hill of doves now not because it's a bad game but the it was just the rule book to me was not intuitive it felt like there was some some leaps of logic that I had to kind of jump through, and I kind of covered and talked a little bit about that uh, when I did the uh, when I did the unboxing and, and 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 I think I did an after action report on this one, I believe. If I did, I'll I'll put some of those links to any of these games that I've talked about here in the um, in the description and also a description about this whole key, Kilroy's Key Three and what my point of view is. But uh, Hill of Doves, just out of these three, really was, to me, the tougher one to kind of get into. And so, uh, again, these are my top three, though. So I mean, if you're on this list, you've, you've, you've championed some, some worthy opponents over time. But this one's going to get the one, uh, which that leaves Keto Batai and uh, Siege of Malta. I mean, in, in, the, in this regard, I'm probably going to go with, um, uh, I, I thought Keto Batai was a little bit easier to get into and understand and know what what the rules are there. So I'm going to give it the, the three keys and I'm going to give Siege of Malta the two keys. Not again, not that Siege of Malta was not that understanding, but there was a lot, a little bit more going on there. And it, the interaction between the cards and the orders, uh, you it took a little bit, you know, to figure that out. Uh, the first couple of plays where Keto Batai, once I kind of understood the system, uh, this was a lot easier to get into, which brings us to V, the value, point of view. My V is for value, which includes uh, replayability, um, you know, bargain for, for, for your bang for your buck. You know, it is if, if you pay a hundred dollar game and play it once, then that's not a lot of value. If you pay, pay a ten dollar game and play it, you know, a hundred times, a lot of value there. But that's not the sole factor. This really gets into how well does it simulate the situation? Does it does it do you feel like you're getting a historical treatment? Uh, is it fun to play? Is it challenging? Is it is it uh, competitive? Uh, all, all those kind of things. And so um, in, in that regard, um, you know, between these three, the probably the one that I would probably uh, it's kind of weird here. I have probably played Keto Batai the most of these three. But it, it's somewhat of a little bit of a puzzle and that, uh, you know, after extended plays, there's only so much more that you can, uh, I guess, get out of it. it it's still playable. It, it, it's not a solved type thing, but, uh, you know, you, you, it's a little bit more of a repetition that comes up. So I'm going to give that the one, which leaves us down to the Siege of Malta and Hill of Doves as far as value. Now, Hill of Doves, um, the... Uh, there, there's quite a bit of, of simulation value in this, I think, because you've got the whole logistics and, you know, going through those three boards and understanding this, uh, the, you know, the, this aspect of the first Hanklo Boer War. Uh, it's a really uh, an interesting simulation in that regard. Siege of Malta is a little bit more abstract in that regard and uh, is kind of pulling back. And so it's not, it doesn't have really the same sim value as probably Hilla Doves. However, um, I probably would play, I've played Siege of Malta more than I've played Hill of Doves. I mean, Hill of Doves takes a little bit more of setting up and getting through those rules again to figure out where you're at. And that kind of goes back to something I was talking about at the beginning of what's the ease to the table uh, and, and how often are you going to be able to play this one. So, so this one is, is really somewhat of a, of, a, of a tough, close one in that regard. But I, I'm going to end up giving the, the three keys to Siege of Malta and giving the two keys to Hill of Doves. So where does that leave us on the key total? Well, uh, Keto, <laughs> as far as his key total, is one, two, three, four, five. Hill of Doves is one, two, three, four, five. And Siege of Malta is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So in this regard, uh, for solo, for me at least, your mileage may vary. Uh, I'm going to go with Siege 1565 Siege of Malta in this case. Again, check out my exclusions. There's a lot of games that would have, if they were in this space, uh, you know, American Tank Ace, Landsworth Ridge, uh, if they were in this space, um, <laughs> they would probably knock some of these out. But again, I'm trying to get as much coverage and talk about 
uh, a bunch of, uh, you know, what's new to me in 2022 and what my experiences are. So that's why I went this direction. Love to know your point of view on any of these three. Uh, where I'm wrong, that's fine. Uh, or any of the games I've talked about, what is your experiences? You you know you're not limited to the same. You're not limiting your list the same way I did mine. So you might want to talk about uh, a whole host of different games uh, that uh, you know from whether they're from you know Compass or DVG or GMT uh, that you found uh, to be better solo plays this year. And can't wait to see what Wayne's thoughts are on any of this stuff. Anyway, thanks all. Thanks for stopping by. Hope you're having a good uh, holiday season, a happy and safe one. Whatever holiday you're celebrating, we're getting ready to, to have the new year as that is celebrated uh, here. And um, hope you're getting ready for that and having a safe one and getting ready for the new year. A lot of fun stuff happening in the new year, I hope, for each one of you. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs>